Good afternoon friends. Welcome to the session. The determination of chloride in water sample. Water contains various types of ions into it. And chloride is one of the most important ions that is required to be present in the potable water or in the usable water. Chloride is to be present in an optimum quantity, in a desired quantity. Excess quantity of chloride makes the water non-potable. For example, you can't use sea water for our day-to-day -day purposes because of the high percentage of dissolved salts into it. One of the methods to check the chloride content in water sample is argentometric method or Morse method. Well, in present context, there are various other techniques also like the use of potentiometers, use of TDS meters, etc. But the topic for today will be determination of chloride using argentometric titration, argentometric analysis, a type of volumetric analysis. It is also called as Morse titration or Morse method. Now, why it is called as argentometric method? Because the titrant used over here the sample used in the burette over here is silver nitrate. Silver has the periodic name or UPAC name as Argentum, hence the name Argentometric method. This method was first designed and developed by Carl Mohr, hence it is also called as Mohr's method. Argentometric method or Mohr's method happens to be one of the oldest titration methods still in use for the determination of chloride. It was researched and published by Carl Friedrich Mohr in the year 1856. Moving on to the principle of uh, the Mohr's method. The principle is chloride is determined by titration of water sample using standard AgNO3 solution in a neutral to alkaline condition in presence of potassium chromate indicator. When we say standard AgNO3 solution, it is the solution whose concentration is known. Let me make it simple, whose normality or molarity or molality is known. With respect to the argentometric titration is concerned, we are concentrating on normality. The solubility product of AgCl is less than silver chromate. Solubility product represented by the symbol Ksp. It indicates the ability of a sample to precipitate out from its solution. Lower the value of solubility product, greater is the ease of precipitation. Now here what happens is when silver has got a chance to combine with chloride or to combine with chromate, it preferably combines with chloride and not with chromate because it can easily precipitate out in the form of silver chloride rather than silver chromate. Once all the chloride ions are being used up in the water sample, forming a white colored precipitate, now the silver ions react with the chromate ions present in the water sample to form a reddish or pinkish red colored silver chromate precipitate. So this is the principle behind the titration method. Coming around to the procedure. Or before the procedure, let us have an idea about the reactions. The silver ions Ag plus react with chloride ions to form AgCl, a white curdy precipitate. The silver ions react with chromate ions to form Ag2CrO4 that is silver chromate pinkish red or red colored precipitate. Moving to the procedure. So we need to transfer 100 ml of the water sample or test sample in a conical flask. To this we have to add about 5 to 8 drops of chromate indicator which is a yellow colored solution potassium chromate. Then we should start titrating it against the standard AgNO3 solution taken in the burette until the red color persists. So this formation of red color, permanent red color is an indication of the end point of titration. Coming to the calculation. So once you 
wind up with the titration once the appearance of pinkish red color is observed we note down the burette reading that burette reading is the volume of standard agno3 solution used and it can be represented as v1 so the calculation is let the normality of standard agno3 solution is equal to n1 volume of agno3 solution is equal to v1 ml that is the burette reading so the titration equation n1 v1 is equal to n2 v2 here n1 and v1 represent agno3 sample n2 and v2 represent the water sample we know what is n1 normality of agno3 we know what is v1 burette reading we know what is v2 that is 100 ml test sample or water sample taken we need to calculate the concentration or normality of chloride that is n2 so the normality or concentration of chloride is n2 that is equal to n1 v1 divided by 100 so once you get the normality of chloride ion normality multiplied by the equivalent mass will give you the amount of sample so the amount of chloride is equal to n2 that is its normality multiplied by 35.5 35.5 is the equivalent mass or equivalent weight of chlorine. Now, how do you calculate the equivalent weight? Equivalent weight is nothing but the atomic weight or atomic mass divided by the number of electron transferred. See there are various other techniques also. Atomic mass divided by basicity of an acid. Uh, atomic mass divided by acidity of a base. Let's not worry too much about that. With respect to chlorine is concerned. Equivalent weight of chlorine is equal to atomic weight of chlorine that is 35.5 divided by number of electron transferred. See in case of chloride the charge is minus 1 therefore the number of electron transferred is equal to 1. Hence equivalent weight of chloride is 35.5 divided by 1 that is 35.5. So this is how we calculate the amount of chloride and the units are gram per liter. Thank you. Have a nice time.